Hi everyone, my name is Sarah McGeehan. I'm a client success manager here with Member Solutions and joining me today is Brett Lechtenberg. Brett is a nationally recognized expert on personal and family safety. Um, he's dedicated his life to educating people about personal security and family security and through his comprehensive lecture series, motivational speaking and personal protection courses, Brett has trained thousands of everyday people to empower themselves both, both physically and mentally as they learn the safest and most effective methods of personal and family protection. Today we're going to talk about how to combat adult bullying and give you talking points and guidelines to run your own successful anti-bullying uh, workshops. Um, October is anti-bullying month and as we were having a discussion about last week, we were talking about what does anti-bullying look like in the world of martial arts these days in our COVID era where lots and lots of things are virtual, right, Brett? <laughs> so how do we address that? Um, some of us are still doing all completely online courses. Some of us are doing hybrid methods and some of us are fully back in location. But anti-bullying and of course the back to school time has always been a significant it's like, it's like the martial arts Christmas, right? <laughs> there's so much you can do with it and there's so many ways to get um, leads, to build member retention. So how, we were talking about, you know, how do we focus on that? What are some of the things we can do in the age of cyber? You know, we always talk about cyber bullying, but how can we really put those things into practice to, to target on anti-bullying month? And, you know, Brett brought up a really, really good point um, as we were talking which kind of brought the adult factor into it. But I don't want to jump on that too much, Brett. I think the way that you presented it was excellent, and I would love to hear more of your thoughts on that. Absolutely. Well, first off, thank you very much for having me on. I appreciate any time I get to talk and hear my own voice, so that's awesome. So thank you. Uh, and I want to honor everybody that's on the call. I know taking time out of your busy schedule, whether you're watching it live or watching it later, uh, you know, I respect your time and uh, hopefully we give you some great value for what we're going to talk about today and and have some fun while we do it and hopefully this fly isn't showing up on <laughs> camera so uh yeah thank you sir i appreciate it so Absolutely. glad to have you yeah it's nice to be here did you have a you know i know we have three kind of main keys we want to hit um you know how to identify in combat bullying in the workplace and cyberbullying ideas to amplify mindfulness and empathy and then talking points and guidelines for right. people to put a program together. Do you have a spot where you wanted to start more than others or have any questions from panelists or from uh, participants or anything to start us off? No, I think that we should kind of, you know, talk, uh, jump right into that identification of it and, and really establish, you know, kind of the things we were talking about last week where how that filters down. And, and you know what I mean? What we're saying and what we're doing on a daily basis is really giving some of our children permission to behave in not so great ways. And then how we can kind of combat that. Can we combat that from the adult down? And can we combat that from the kid up? Yep. Yeah, and I think that's a great place to start. So I'm really going to speak from what I've seen in my community and what I see from uh, in our school. Um, and you know of course as the saying goes your mileage may vary what people are seeing in their parts of the country so when we were talking what really came to my mind and what we've really been noticing especially over the last you know seven eight months is the culture of divisiveness amongst people and i think we're seeing that on social media i think most people here watching this uh, can agree that it feels like in our country right now, we're probably more divided than we've been in a long, long time. Um, and then uh, we add masks to that and the raised level of potential illness, people dying, people losing their jobs, the economic problems. I mean, this is not a small, small situation. I'm not trying to minimize it in any way or over dramatize it, but it is something that we, have to deal with and you put these factors together it's kind of like the perfect storm um, and kids are going to feed off of their parents and from what i've seen again my observations has been that their parents fear stress and sometimes inappropriate behavior 
uh, has really trickled down to the kids. And I wouldn't call it a trickle. I call it more of a waterfall. Waterfall. <laughs> um, and as I think anybody who's a parent uh, could probably agree is that your kids pick up on what you do very, very quickly. They are, they're like Alexa or Google. They're never, or Facebook, right? It's always on. They're always listening. <laughs> yep, absolutely. <laughs> and so if we're not mindful about what we say and do, and we're not showing empathy towards other people, then our children are going to pick up on that quickly. And that's going to be, uh, it's going to quickly move towards their, their um, default value state right? Our children pick up so many things from us on, on, as far as their value structure, their speech patterns, their their view of the world, that uh, and that we need to be conscious of that, I believe. Now, yes. I'm not saying be a phony person or anything like that, but it's so, with so much stress, and so much change, which many people don't really like change. They really like their routines. And of course, we all like our routines to some extent, <laughs> but some people yeah. are just better at adapting than others. Yes. So typically people who aren't as great at adapting, um, that stress gets amplified even more. And it gets down to their friends, to their children, to their other family members. And it can cause uh, a lot of emotion, right? A lot of negative stress. There's good right. stress, it's called you stress, you, right? And there's negative stress, which is the yeah. bad stuff. Um, and if we don't take note of that, we can really have some detrimental effects to the people around us and to our own personal well being in our own state, right? So um, that's what I've noticed. And, and I think a lot of this can be handled through. Uh, some really powerful concepts that have been in martial arts and society for thousands of years, but have kind of been ignored until more recently. Um, and in the last couple of decades, they've been really embraced. The concepts of mindfulness, empathy, creating culture have really been embraced in professional sports, uh, in corporate America, uh, right. because they realize how important this can be, right? And so uh, later I'll talk about a, a few of the people that I follow and engage with and some of the great things I think they're doing so people can have some other resources. They don't have to just listen to me or listen to this. Um, you know, they'll, uh, I'll give them some of the stuff I look at and, and I'm happy to, I'm constantly reading books on this subject or looking at material. And so I'm happy to share, you know, whatever I have, so. Awesome. I think I wanted to piggyback on something that you said, though, is mm -hmm. that like currently right now, you know, um, given given the world situation, the country situation, our stress and, and our our reactions are amplified at, at the moment. So our words are worse. Our, our reactions to things can be worse. But I think that I mean, as a parent, from my own perspective, kids are always kind of like that right they don't have the poise of most adults to be right. able to pull themselves in or recognize when they've overstepped a line mm -hmm. so if we're here right now they're here you know <laughs> whereas normally you know we can keep our stress you know a little bit in control mm -hmm. and they're always going to be a step above that because they don't have the life experience to so if we're really uptight right now, I think it's important to note that they're gonna be even worse than us on a bad day. You know what I mean? Um, so just kind of keeping that mindfulness of, you know, if it's bad for us, it's times 100, it's magnified for children. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I just the, said that about the amplification, it, it just kind of popped into my mind. Well, well, aren't they always? And so if we're worse, they're way worse. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. I think, seeing a lot of a lot of crazy things happening these days you know and they they happen in very small ways you know little messages that are sent during classes you know mm -hmm. all of these these different things and, and it's a whole different world because now it's not just being on social media you know because we're scrolling Facebook I'm on my computer all day because I work on my computer and not in an office and most people are so mm -hmm seeing these communications happen between adults and kids and it's just sad it's just you're right it got so much worse but yeah. i'm sorry 
I just that that thought process kind of just came to me. <laughs> no, it, it's it's totally true, and you know, and I think the, we we were kind of talking about workplace and adults here, and I'd kind of like yeah. to stand that for a minute. Is there's some the there's some inherent problems that go on in the workplace that further amplify the problem, and and there's some things that go on politically that kind of amplify the program and by politically i mean that states have different rules and laws and they interpret things different not democrat not Republican. Politics. Yeah. Politics. Yeah. <laughs> legislative differences right um and not all states have comprehensive legislation on the on the subject right like i think it's 29 states if i remember right have very um specific um, rules, regulations, consequences for workplace bullying versus harassment, harassment versus bullying, and that can be an intertwined subject, right? So there's some ambiguity that's always going on, and there's some uh, difference of, you know, interpretation of what bullying is, what bullying isn't, what harassment is, what harassment isn't, and that's where I think, uh, and I one other thing, the consequence for each is ambiguous, and I think that's what is the root of many problems is you, I can't tell you how many times I've walked into a school, met with a principal, met with a teacher, a PE teacher, whatever, and them look at me, maybe close the door and go, Brett, I don't even really know what bullying is, right? And so you have to have that conversation, yeah. right? Well, the fact that they're having that with me and they haven't already had it in the school, that's a that's kind of a problem, right? And the uh, same in the workplace. If a, if, a, if a company you work for doesn't have really clear processes, definitions, consequences, standards for what these things are, then it's kind of like anything you want can run rampant, right? So we have to start in the workplace really with what are the established standards? Right? What's bullying? What's harassment? What's you know? What are the definitions? Um, and and trying to alleviate ways to interpret that. Um, since we don't have standards and we don't have, or we not we might have kind of lax standards. We might have lax definitions. We're not conducting consistent trainings. Right. right? How do you train what's appropriate, what's not? And then we can't have mindful focused repetition on what we should and should not do and focused repetition is the mother of skill right and when you don't have that i think the martial artists especially on here, um can relate to that it's one thing to practice it's another thing to mindfully practice right with you <laughs> and uh, we all i think kind of understand the difference um, so mindful practice, my focus practice is important. And if it's important in learning a, a kata or pumze or form or how to cut with a sword or whatever, isn't it just as important when you're communicating with another person to learn how to speak to them, to feel empathy for what they're saying and understand it and take it and reflect what they're saying, but not project on them. What, right. What, right. There's, there's there's a big difference and i think we've really gotten away with that people can hide behind their keyboards they're hiding behind their masks there's a lot of ambiguity and it's causing these problems does that make sense it does absolutely and that makes me like kind of think of another point too is like how do we combat those people that honestly they exist that don't believe bullying is real it's like man up you know what i mean those people that it's like no you were taught when you were little sticks and stones can break my bones but words can never hurt me that's just not true and mm -hmm. you know as, as time goes on we learn these things and, and we change as a society um but there's the, some people that'll stay back oh you just gotta toughen up <laughs> yeah i i'm with you 100 percent. i i do believe that as a society we have gotten a little bit more sensitive a little weaker and we could use a little We'll call it toughening up, but sure. <laughs> uh, you know, let's let's be honest. Some of the things people do are extremely inappropriate, very and can be very hurtful and very damaging. Right, for sure. And so those are, those first few things are are kind of my how do you identify if you don't have definitions, if you don't have trainings, if you don't have standards, if you're not mindfully focusing and creating some repetition, 
um, if you're not teaching people how to be empathetic and use their words appropriately, right? That whole thing, use your words, it, <laughs> it should be use your words appropriately, not yeah. just use your words, right? <laughs> There's um, some words you shouldn't use. <laughs> Right. And then also proper reporting of a problem. Yeah. I can tell you how many schools I've been in, uh, or let's put it this way, how many kids I've talked to, students. You know, we've trained about 7,000 kids with our anti-bully program, and they don't understand how to report a problem. They don't understand it. And all they hear is tell the teacher, tell your principal. But when the principal and the teachers overwhelmed with what they've got going on and they've got kids talking to them and administration, they got everything going on. Right. Sometimes their filters aren't, if you don't speak to people properly, their filters are on, they dismiss or misunderstand. Many times that's what it is. They just simply misunderstand. They're not trying to minimize. They just misunderstand what's going on and the importance of what's being said. Right. So we have to, and that kind of my last, my, Sixth point is you got to role play things. Right? I think whether it's a business culture, whether it's school, anti-bullying, whatever, right? The three R's are not reading, writing, and arithmetic because how many of those actually start with R, right? Um, the the three R's are actually read, recite, and role play. Yep. Those are the important things, and that's how people learn. Absolutely. Right? And it doesn't matter if you're five years old or 55 years old. That's how that's a key fundamental on how people learn. It's not the only way, obviously. So for sure, for sure. So Go ahead. that's why I think we should uh, the best place to start, in my experience, to identify and start to combat combat or mitigate bullying in the workplace. And that also will affect the trickle down or the waterfall <laughs> down onto our kids many times. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think we see a very big change in, as you've said a few times now, empathy. Empathy is pretty much everything these days. You know, you, you brought up a really good point about how, you know, given the current climate of the world and adding, and this will in no way go political, but adding that tumultuous um, side versus side kind mm -hmm. of thing right now, and trying to be able to get across that, hey, we don't have to agree on everything, but that doesn't mean we can't be respectful. We can exactly. respectfully disagree. And it feels like recently, between adults especially, that's just lost. Like nobody's opinion is more important than the other. So how do we, hey, listen, do you believe what you believe in anything, whether it's politics, religion, whatever. <laughs> you yeah. believe it that's great and and i support your right to believe that um yeah. instead of you're wrong the, you're wrong the, the, you're not right we can't be friends anymore because you don't believe the same thing i do and the amount of that especially on social media that i'm seeing between adults is mm -hmm. just baffling and it's mm -hmm. you know in the social media aspect of the world it's easy you unfriend them you stop following them you snoo them for 30 days, whatever it is that you need to do to be like, not the kind of energy I'm living with. But in the workplace, you're stuck with that energy. And, yep. you know, being able to properly report that in a way that you're not the office snitch, <laughs> you know what I mean? Being able to say, listen, I don't want to ruffle any feathers here, but these conversations really don't have to happen. It obviously is causing issues. So what yep. can we do? Be the change, be the change. What can we do to make sure that these kind of things don't happen? You know, I like that, the read, recite, and role play. That's a good one. Yeah, and I think, I, I think it, since we kind of went here, it's important to understand the difference between empathy and sympathy, right? Sometimes right. people who have a really, who are very black and white, which I personally can kind of fall into that sometimes, um, you know, they look at it as like just a crybaby, right? You don't, but empathy is really the ability to see someone's someone's viewpoint from their perspective. You don't have to adopt it. You don't have to feel bad for them. There doesn't have to be any of that. They just have to be able to see, or at least attempt to see, their, right. from their perspective, right? And when you do that, you know, that 
opens up so much more stimulating conversation, ideas, thoughts, concepts, than trying to shut everybody down and out yell them, whether that's physically yelling or yelling on Facebook or unfriending them or, um, yeah. So I think learning what empathy really is versus sympathy is, is important. And I've had people tell me that you can't teach people to be empathetic. And I would, the science does not back that up from anything that I've seen. Uh, and, and in fact, most of the research I've seen see, show that children start to be able to learn this about five, right? Before yeah. the, your, your world is pretty self-centered, right? You, you, oh, can't, yeah. you can't communicate very well. You cry, you point, you, right? You, you communicate through emotion. <laughs> and you in the middle of target. Yeah. <laughs> and so, uh, but once kids begin to uh, be able to communicate a lot better they're more mature then you can start they start to show empathy they'll learn empathy and on the flip side of that potential coin is they learn to be nasty <laughs> you learn to be nasty if, if you're nasty you said so, five i'm pretty sure my daughter was like two <laughs> <laughs> well sometimes they can be nasty earlier <laughs> yeah. no but you're, I mean, you're right i think that I think that wanting people to be, wanting to make sure people are okay is something we're kind of born with. I mean, you've seen two-year-olds, one-year-olds go, mommy K, Mom, if mommy's sad or mommy's upset or whatever, you know, that's, I didn't teach her to like see me upset and say, mommy okay, you know, that's right. something that we do have. We just don't know how to harness it. We don't know how to use it for good um, yeah. and we grow a little. Yep, many times that's the case. So. Um, it, it becomes, I think if parents really embrace, or adults really embrace that the children that are around them, they're gonna embrace their values, right? And uh, good or bad. And this is my opinion. I always want my kids to be free thinkers. I want them to make choices based on how to actually make choice. We teach them how to make choices, right? Based on their value structure based on the circumstances, um, we try not to ram things down their throat, like you have right. to do this, right? Because try as we might, our kids are sovereign individuals, just like we are. And, uh, you know, I'm married, you, you've got a boyfriend. I mean, you you have spirited debate sometimes. You're not, although we might be really uh, similar on most points, there are fine points that we don't agree on. That doesn't mean that we're gonna have a fight about it. We, just, right. we need to discuss it. We need to understand each side's point of view and we need to uh, respect it, even if we don't agree with it. Right. right? And so just, just something to think about. And, and I think, you know, there's, there's some concepts that we can all use to improve empathy. Um, but there's, I think before you try and teach it, you have to have the underlying, a few underlying concepts. And there's a lot, but I, I kind of put three down that I thought would be really good for today. And, and to improve empathy, the first underlying concept I would say is people almost never doubt what they're told. I mean, it's good, they almost always doubt what they're told, but they virtually never doubt or reject what they decide or conclude for themselves, right? So I tell you something, uh, depending on the tone, you may or may not accept it. And if it's a negative tone, you're not, you're going to be putting up walls and you, you're just not going to go there, right? Right. Um, the second thing I think we have to be conscious of, in my opinion, is that people do things for their own reasons. And you may not agree with their thoughts or their actions or their behaviors, but those thoughts, reactions, behaviors serve somebody at some point right? They were serving them to a certain point, and then they might now be at a point where they're not serving them, but they don't even know it. Right. right? Think of a martial arts school owner, you know, they might collect their own tuition and stuff and do their own billing for their first 30 students, but by the time you got 300 students, they need member solutions. <laughs> because you can't spend any time teaching classes and giving people, you know, what they really want. You spend all time, you know, doing client service that's not on the mat you got to have both right so it's important that you when you're talking with somebody they just may not realize that they're some of their stuff is not serving them anymore. yeah and for sure. ways around that 
and then the third thing and this one i see uh, these i brought these up because i see these three all the time and i've been guilty of these three and and, and we're all going to be to some extent but um never tell people what they need to do if i was uh, you know at your house and i come in and i notice something i might be sarah you really need to clean this refrigerator Right. The first thing you're going to do is my refrigerator is fine. Don't tell me what I need. Right. Even though the refrigerator could be a mess. <laughs> but it's <laughs> and I, fine. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure your refrigerator is fine. But as soon as you start using you need to do this or you must do that or you have to do this. Oh, my goodness. People's yeah. walls. Work. And so it becomes pretty tough. So there's some things that I have found that work really well. Um, that we teach our staff, that I teach my coaching clients. I don't have these in any particular order, just like those other three, but um, if you want to teach empathy, one, relay it in a story and show people how to do it in a story. So we all probably, if the martial arts school's on here, uh, maybe not all, but many of the schools are teaching some form of life skill, right? Every day we have a life skill in class, every leadership session, whatever, we have a life skill. So if you're teaching a life skill and you can relay it in more of a story form and you can give kind of both sides of the story because most stories have kind of a hero and a villain or kind yeah. of like start, right? Show both sides of that. Yeah. Right. And, and, and invoke conversation about that. So that's a good way to teach empathy. Um, being conscious of your communication right we talked about this role playing when you don't agree um, not telling people what they need those, those kind of things right uh, th those are important and then using language that makes people feel good even when you don't agree with them and by feel good that might be a bit of an exaggeration but at least you're not making them upset you don't have to be yeah. confrontational yeah you're not putting them more on edge because you're, you're disagreeing about something yeah. yeah and so there's a there's a few things you, you can do right um one give people credit for everything they do regardless of how much you help them like you did a great job in x or uh, you created incredible results for yourself by yeah and, and there's times many times you're the martial arts instructor you're the coach whatever you say you know that they wouldn't have got there without you they wouldn't have been able to do what they can do now but, and, and they thank you for it and, and and it's nice to be recognized but you can and i've seen people do this and go yeah well if it wasn't for me you never would have been able to do that so you're welcome they do stuff like that it's like oh why not just say hey you know what i was your guide i was your mentor but you had to put in the hard work yeah. i'm proud of you for doing that right so that's something um when you go to challenge a commonly held belief, like some people have really strong beliefs and things, um, instead of saying you're wrong or you don't make any sense, how about things like, have you ever considered that? Or I would invite you to consider, or I'd invite you to make some space in your thoughts for. Yeah, yeah. Things like that. Um, those allow people, they don't feel as attacked. Right. And especially if you can pick out certain things that they're saying that you could agree with. Just because mm -hmm. you don't agree with the concept on a whole mm -hmm. doesn't mean there aren't bits and pieces of it, right? Like exactly. yes, absolutely see how this portion here, that that makes a lot of sense to me. But I mean, even though we don't agree on this, I can understand it. Yep. You know? Exactly. Exactly. Another thing is like if someone there's sometimes people you know are just wrong. They're just flat out wrong or they're they've embraced something that's a lie, right? Well, as soon as you say that's a lie, and I think <laughs> uh, based on a political <laughs> debate system, how that's not working out, that this will make sense to many people. Instead of saying that you're wrong or that's a lie, how about it's more like, well, I would invite you to consider that X is maybe incomplete or that there might be more to the story. Right. Um, I, or I might invite you to consider that X is inaccurate based on Y. You know? Right. Uh, so those are things. And then um, we get, there's a, there's an E, people will get in arguments. Like I could say, 
bullying is caused by anybody over five feet tall and you could be like you know i'm five bullying, five. <laughs> bullying is only caused by people four feet tall and so something just like obscure right? that's a dumb example but it's the only no, one I can, the moment. um and i can start an, a fight with you by saying well you're just wrong four foot tall people just simply don't bully right um but instead, why not just say, you know what, that's not my experience or my observation. Right. right. So there's people watching this right now that probably think that guy is a crackpot. But you know what, I started this by saying, I'm just going to talk about my experience and my observations of what I see in my community, my school, and my surroundings. Now, right. can you argue that? Not rationally. You're in Philadelphia. <laughs> You're not yeah. in my community, my situation. I'm not doing what you see on a daily basis. but. Yep. What I see is a little different, you know? Yep. And we do different research, right? So um, another way to, to go about that is, and I've used, I, these are my top, that first one is my top saying. My second one is, I really honor your, uh, your efforts and your findings. I'd love to sit down with you and share research together and learn more. Because what do I know? Most people don't research anything. Right. They do, it's really incomplete. And so most people, it just makes them go research in their mind. They're not saying it out loud. They go They're like, never mind. <laughs> yeah. and, and they, instead of getting mad, they start to become reflective. Right. And they go, hmm. And at least it calms it down because you're, right. you're willing to have a conversation. Share with me what you found. Sway my opinion. I'm willing to let you sway me. Now they don't really have anything to push against. Right. So th those people that tend to be more um, exuberant with their with their 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 opinions and their thoughts. And if we can take just a second to bring the energy down, it, it'll change the conversation. It'll change the conversation a lot. So being oh. able in that moment, which is super hard for me um, to look at somebody who's getting heated and not get heated myself. But if you keep yourself cool and calm, not only will the things de-escalate nine out of 10 times, they realize that they kind of look stupid, <laughs> right? Yeah. As you're standing there cool as a cucumber and somebody's kind of going crazy and you're like, you all right, man? <laughs> you know? So you, they usually will calm a little. And you just kind of proved the whole point to this webinar for people that are watching. You remain cool, calm, and collected. You were mindful about your state mindful about your language and you're able to de uh, you know to mitigate or decrease the level of stress aggravation and things that are coming out of people you and can't so, control the behavior of others right you can only control your own reaction to it i forget who said that quote but you can't yep. go out there and say i'm going to change all the bullies it does come from a place of within which is why the martial arts is such a great place to start whether it's kids or adults because you're learning to feel confident. You're not nervous if somebody is, well, I mean, you're nervous, but you're not nervous that you're gonna get seriously hurt because you have these skills. But martial arts isn't just teaching the punching and the kicking, it's teaching the mindfulness. It's teaching the empathy. It's teaching people how to act with character. And so some of the things that I picked up on too, if we have to do virtual or if we're working with adults, yeah, self-defense is a, is a good part of that, right? But it's not like in high school where it's like, meet me by the oak tree at three o'clock. You know what I mean? We're not, most of us aren't really behaving that way, you know, in our 20s and 30s, hopefully. Um, but there are things you can do. We could have scenarios. We could partner up and do workshops, um, which I'll let you talk to. I know we have to wrap up shortly, but um, we could make role play. And, and different scenarios and make people act these things out together and let them really play that hero and let them really play that villain because mm -hmm. some people really are just that you know so mm -hmm. i think that these, the the role playing part of it um in the workshops with adults in, in a workplace and being able to come up with scenarios where people feel a little uncomfortable or somebody's super vocal about something that may be toe in the line about what's appropriate in the workplace I think that's an awesome idea. You can do that virtually and you can do that in person. And I think it would be pretty hilarious, actually. <laughs> yeah. definitely Tell me a little bit about like how you came to the, the workshop thing. Um, well, 
it kind of goes back to read, recite, role play, right? What anytime teaching a life skill, if you, if we embrace that model, we got good results. So I just embrace that model with everything that we do, right? I use a system called the Learning Circle, which I, I think I originally heard from like Roland Osborne like 20 years yeah. ago, right? Um, but there's a lot of different teaching methods, right? There's a dead method. There, there's the one method. There's the learning circle. There's a, and I don't know who any created any of them for sure. <laughs> uh, <laughs> there's like old wives tales just passed down. Yeah. So I just experimented with a number of learning methodologies, right? Teaching, I should say teaching methodologies and also learning methodologies. What, what are the best ways that I found that people learn? And so that just became the crux of any of my workshops and became the crux when i wrote you know the anti-bully program that was all it wasn't just from you know my belief that was from teaching i don't even know i should have kept count i guess back in the day of how many anti-bully classes we tried different things with until we went oh when we use this model we get a much bigger result we get a much better result Right, and, and we do instructor training classes for whatever it is, martial arts, kickboxing, tactical, doesn't matter, we use this. And really just being a student of the game, right? And there's so many great people in our industry that I learned from, I watched, I took classes from, I traveled the country, you know, from the West Coast with people like Dave Kovar to the East Coast with people like Tom Petiri and a bunch of people in between, right? There's some, there's some great people in our industry. Absolutely. And, uh, just because I named those two doesn't mean I'm dissing anybody else. I'm just saying that. I just they came to mind coast to coast. That's crazy. I actually I actually uh, trained with Tom Siri. Oh, did you? Yeah, I yeah, love Tom. I mean, we did a workshop. It was fun. It was fun back in the '90s EPSD. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that uh, you know, I think this goes. This kind of leads back to the whole part of being a free thinker. Be someone who investigates. Right, so somebody comes to a self-defense class, let's say I'm putting on a women's self-defense class. I know what I'm gonna teach because I know what the police reports say are most statistical probability. I know what it's being said in the newspaper. I know what I've been asked for 24 years, right? It's almost always the same. Um, but it, it doesn't, it never fails. I, I always tell people, you know, just because I'm teaching you this here and like this, we can only cover so many scenarios. You've got to train for yourself. You've got to think for yourself. You've got to try and you've got to experiment and you've got to go do different things. So don't just listen to me in this one 90 minute class. I mean, come right. to class and role play a whole bunch of different scenarios that we do. Right. right? And so be the change, right? Yeah. And it's, the, I think it's, this is part of this goes to part of empathy too. Hopefully it's not too just disjointed. But when you want to look at any situation, look at both sides. That teaches empathy, right? I, if I'm looking at a, a, a political issue, I might be a staunch Republican, but that doesn't mean I should be closed off and not go look at the Democratic side of things, right? That's Vice versa. I could be the world's biggest liberal all the way to the... What is it left? That's the left, right? Yeah, I, never could, I never could remember left and right with politics. Um, uh, I might be the world's biggest Democrat, far left as you can get, but I should be intelligent enough, mindful enough to go that as far to the right, to the Republican side as I can and look at their perspective. Right. I mean, look at the issues and check the facts. Absolutely. Okay. Whether it's and and you know this has been I've seen this brought up a lot uh, in podcasts and research and stuff these days. And we'll do, we'll just say we'll just talk about Corona for a second. It's really hard to get to the absolute true facts, right? Because there's so much opinion, right, left, right, whatever, um, and opinion from different doctors and what we should do. There's so much opinion just being flooded into social media and into the traditional media that it's really hard to decipher the true facts. Absolutely. And you will find doctors and psychologists who are saying the same thing. Even though I'm in the field, I'm having trouble zeroing in on the actual facts, right? And so 
if I, th I personally think if we just start with that in mind, what we know may not be fact. Just right. have to assume that you could be wrong. Just be open to the fact that you could be wrong. <laughs> right. <laughs> and then, said than done. Yeah, and I teach people, you know, what we call the decision tree and the decision matrix. How do you then make a good decision? Right? And I don't think that decision skills are taught, how to t make decisions are taught very often. No. Um, people based on impulse and, and impulse is taught. Mm -hmm. And it, it, you said that earlier too. It's like, we don't have to teach our kids what we know and what we believe. We have to teach our kids to find the information and how to make decisions. I love that. I love yep. that. And yep. as adults, teaching them how to do that is going to force us to put it into practice. Yep. Yeah, for sure. So, you know, we, we tend to embrace quicker one of the things that we research and we teach, right? Yep. And that's one of the things that I think is, is great about human beings. Uh, it's just that the current inflammatory state of our affairs in the country, whether it's Corona or politics or what, I don't know how many weeks from the election, four weeks or whatever from the election here, five weeks, um, so much stuff being dumped into media and polit uh, social media that I think if, if we all could just step back Accept the fact that we could be wrong. Do more research because it doesn't take very long. This is the information age, right? You can get almost anything you want. And I think if people understood too that, you know, there are some very, very specific human biases that happen. Like if I believe that Kung Fu is the greatest martial art in the world, right? And I go out and I search on the internet, I will find all kinds of information that says Kung Fu is the greatest martial art in the world. But if I'm a Krav Maga person, and I believe that Krav Maga is the greatest thing that ever hit planet Earth, and I go out and research that on the internet, I will find all kinds of information about how it's the greatest thing on planet Earth. Now, why can't they both be just freaking awesome? <laughs> I love it. <laughs> yeah. And they are. Right. How much differentiation is there really amongst the martial arts, right? If you're a striking art, your striking art is pretty similar if you just reduce the fact that, you know, my instructor's instructor's instructor who came from whatever temple and wherever at, it's got to be right. Come on. <laughs> that, we all believe that about our stuff, right? Like what I do is the best and this is why it's the best, but we're forgetting two key words. For me. For me. Exactly. For me. Exactly. So we have to understand that not everything is best for you. <laughs> Yeah, that, you're exactly right. And that goes back to the beginning where I said you got to realize that people do things based on their reasons, not yours. And at some point, those beliefs, those things serve them at some level, even though it may not be serving them. Yep. I love that. Absolutely. Um, so I want to be respectful of time. I, I think we're probably over, but I, I could keep talking. Uh, but is there anything that we didn't cover that you wanted to cover? Is there any questions that came in? Is there anything like that <laughs> I, I think that we're good now but anyone can feel free to send us questions of course we will send out the replay after this so feel free to reply to that email with any of your questions and i can get you in touch with brett or communicate directly to brett for you on on your behalf um it all starts with us guys you know as adults we're the one that's leading the change to what our kids believe and what our kids practice and and it really is a big it, it's very telling a lot of times, you know, you always hear, oh, it must be the parents. If a kid's acting that way, it must be the parents. And no, that's not always the case. We know that's not true. We know kids will be little brats regardless sometimes. So, but we have to teach them how to make those decisions. And yes. um, I would love anyone's feedback on different things you're doing um, to help combat adult bullying in your communities, how you're affecting that change, and get your gears turning about how we can use anti-bullying month to really work from the ground uh, the, you know the sky right down to the ground and and make that a, a whole family thing but i want right. to thank everyone for your time brett thank you so much for joining us uh, this is a this is a good one you got something yeah i said i would give some resources and so oh, yeah. so uh, just some things that um 
I, I really love the work of Dr. Michael Gervais. He is a human performance psychologist, works with the Seahawks, Red Bull, a whole bunch of... Yeah, yeah. His, yeah. New, his new audio book, Compete to Create, has now become required, inf required reading for all of our black belts, adults or teens, and to do the exercises, because it's very similar to what we teach in martial arts. Um, he's teaching it to you know, professional athletes and Microsoft and that kind of stuff. I think people would enjoy that. Um, Paul Hoyt's program on uh, mind sequencing is excellent on mindfulness, meditation, those kind of things. Uh, and then um, depends on where you want to go with that. But uh, I also really like Angela Duckworth's work on grit. She's got a book called Grit. It's also got some TED Talks. There are uh, TMIC, the most important conversations, is a, another group really working to bring some of these uh, philosophies out. None of them are really new, right? We're just trying to bring them back in a way that people can embrace them. Uh, they're doing some great work with that. And then if people are just really looking for uh, information on how to get more from themselves or for, from their kids. Uh, I think one work that's really important is the coddling of the American mind. I don't know if you've read that. It's Hi. pretty extensive. It's about a 10, 11 hour audible. Um, it's, it's a, I think it's 20 year track history of the way things have changed on our college campuses and the way we've went from being free thinkers and emotionally strong to deteriorating greatly and how they're tracking that. Um, there was a great thing that just came out on HBO this last, I don't know, week or two ago, I don't know, weeks, but on real sports about the trophy culture and how it's affected oh, yeah. kids. If, if people haven't seen that, my guess is that somebody's probably put it on YouTube by now. So like a 10 minute segment on how, you know, the science is coming back that I think in martial arts, we all knew it. It's giving every kid a trophy, giving every kid reward for everything really hurts them right yep it teaches them to not be empathetic and it teaches them to not be mindful and a lot of other things so that's just some of the stuff but um I, i'm a, constantly reading and looking at stuff like that so absolutely i always feel free to send your suggestions forward to me <laughs> <laughs> always feel free all of that sounds really incredible um anything else that you wanted to add today or uh, no, I think we covered a lot, and hopefully yes. it was in a, in a format that was people can get, you know, take those pieces, even if they have to replay the video and, you know, write them down. But I tried to do them in order, um, yep. do, them by the, do them so that people could take the pieces back and actually use them. And, of course, be free thinkers. Go go read stuff. Go watch stuff. Excuse me. And most of all, read, recite, role play. Practice the stuff in your school or in your business, and it will be a big help, I think. Agreed. Agreed. I love the idea of you having um, some of your belt ranks having to read, required reading these kind of things. I think that's incredible. And it'd be neat to find something um, more along the lines of the younger generation, you know, your five to 10 year olds and finding something that's appropriate for their age group as required reading as well for belt testing and things of that nature. Yep. I think that that could do a lot of really good in the world. Yep, for sure. But Thank you well, so much for your time, Brett. Really yeah. appreciate it. Great to be with you guys again. So if I can do anything for you, let me know. And thank you, everybody who watches this, even if you totally disagree with me, I respect your opinion. <laughs> That's okay. We don't have to agree. <laughs> have a great day, Brett. Thank it's you, everyone, for joining us. I'm sorry. <laughs>